Big news, I completely deleted my card store. That's, you know, partially true. I deleted all of the cards that I had listed prior to my new inventory system. If you've been following the channel, I don't post here very regularly because this channel, I want to be more about uh, how you sell cards. I've tried to experiment with like unboxing content and that kind of stuff and it really just isn't, it doesn't really, doesn't really work. And so if I can kind of pivot more towards like the meta bird's eye view of selling cards from how I do it, you know, not someone who's doing uh, a Burbank card style business, not someone who's doing, you know, a hundred thousand cards in their inventory. If I can, if I can do that and show you the, the approach of someone who's doing it on, I mean, right now I've got, after I deleted 5,000 listings, I still have 1200 cards listed. Uh, but the difference is, is prior, like here's an example of a player. Um, he's a defensive end for the Giants. Aziz Ojolari, I think is how you say his name. I have about 24 of his rookie card, uh, and it's priced way too high, and it's not selling, and it requires that I go through all this again and uh, reprice it, retake photos, and really understand, am I gonna sell these cards all at one time, or am I gonna sell them individually? And for a player like that, after, you know, I've been selling cards, I don't, you know, cards probably, I don't know how much money per month, but between 50 and five cards a day, that's been like the range I've been in for the past year or so, I have a pretty good idea of what players have the name recognition to sell individually versus ones who don't. And so a player like him, I think I'll just lot up all the cards together, uh, or probably in lots of 11, because that's the highest amount you can still use eBay standard envelope shipping on, auction them off, and just be done with them, get them out of the store. Uh, still, I have not found any lock selling large uh, sets of cards. Uh, I've had a lot more luck in terms of ROI relative to what I would get in a giant auction in doing like small micro lots, like six cards or 11 cards of a player or a team. Uh, because I think that there's enough people who are trying to either fill out sets or are, are collectors of that where they want that value play, I guess, because they're still only paying like 25 to 75 cents a card per card for these players, as opposed to someone who just wants to buy 25,000 cards or 5,000 cards in a giant BCW uh, organizer box, stuff like that. So I think that deleting all those listings, you know, it's not even gonna be bad in the short term. Like today, I, was, I just filmed the same video for my other channel, but with a different emphasis. So like this morning, I'm gonna ship out 22 cards. Uh, two of them from my previous inventory system, which is basically no inventorying at all, uh, and 20 of them from the new inventory system with better pricing, with better pictures, with better descriptions. So I think it's pretty clear from those two uh, facts that what I have to do is delete, and what I did is delete, you know, it was like 5,000 listings. It was crazy. It was between four and 5,000 listings. I don't remember the exact number. I should have probably written it down before I uh, hit delete and all those, but you know, whatever, water under the bridge. Um, I'm excited about it. It'll allow me to go through and re-inventory this stuff the next issue I'm gonna have, I think, is I'm using these 100 BCW boxes to organize cards by batches. Once I get over a thousand boxes like that, it's gonna be really hard to pay attention to all of them and know where they are. So I have to figure out some way to organize the boxes in some other kind of box. Um, just a little backstory, I guess, or background on what I'm talking about. Previously, I tried to mimic what Burbank cards did or large, large companies like that and use the 5,000 card four row BCW boxes and that was just too much for me. I didn't have the ability to keep them all organized. I didn't have large enough sets where I could have like one set per box. So there were multiple divisions within each box and it just became very, very messy. Um, and if it works for you, it works for you. But I think that everyone has to figure out how they wanna run their business, what strengths they have and how they can uh, approach it in a manner that allows them to maximize their time, maximize their investment, and not become frustrated with uh, a disorganized system because that's, again, what was happening. I was spending five minutes to find a card that I sold for two bucks profit, uh, and that's just like infuriating on my end, and I'm just like, what am I even doing this for? And in the back of my head, again, it was just, oh, well, you're still making some money off of this, but this morning, you know, the writing was on the wall. Um, those old cards are dead, they're priced incorrectly, they have bad pictures. Uh, they need to be reformatted in almost every single way. And if I'm doing that, why not just delete all the listings and relist them as opposed to trying to go through, search for the card, update the custom SKU, update the picture, update the standard description. I, I know maybe if you're not familiar with doing like bulk listing on eBay, that might seem like it makes more sense, 
but trust me, it is so much easier just to have your own uh, standardized template and start fresh uh, and, and re reassess what things are worth and what things are going for. If you like stuff like this, I think you should subscribe to the channel because there are not many people out there who make videos about the nitty gritty details of selling cards on eBay. A lot of people unbox cards or a lot of people do like really high value stuff, but my average sale out of these 20 cards was probably, I don't know, six bucks, five bucks. So cards that you're making some money off of and cards that you definitely want to buy for a quarter or a dollar, but not like, you know, PSA 10 rookies worth $25,000. See you guys later.